Now I am inviting Dr. Ravish for presenting the case uh, of endocrine, endocrinology and uh, Ravish is the hard working member of IFPH and uh, uh, we are here, uh, he arranged everything and now we are sitting here because of him. So I am inviting Dr. Ravish uh, for presentation. Gland, then pituitary, the parathyroid, the thyroid gland, adrenals, ovary, and testes. Okay, you all know about this. And I am directly going to the theme of my presentation that is mainly we focus on, from in homeopathy, we mainly focus on the treatment. So today, so today my initial presentation is on the prevention of endocrine disorders. Usually, in prevention in homeopathy, we focus only on genus epidemicus. Okay. Uh, for, uh, for example, Arsal is for homeopathy, so homeopathy is for Arsal is a confusion for us. Okay. So, this is my theme that is a prevention of endocrine disorders. I am only focusing on three disease conditions. Okay. And, and this is regarding diabetes mellitus. See, in diabetes mellitus, the pre-diabetic condition, the pre-diabetic condition is always ranging from 5.7 to 6.5. Or roughly we can say that it is between 6 to 7. Okay. Now as per the new criteria of, of WHO, it is, uh, it, the patient is not pre-diabetic in that age is 5.4. That is a newly revised state. Okay. So why I presented this is, in this range, that is a 5.7 to 6.5. Five is a precious time we can prevent diabetes. That means above 6.5, it's a clinically a diabetic case. And in homeopathy, we can prevent cases in this range. That is 5.7 to 6.5 using our constitutional treatment. So this usually majority of the homeopaths do. So I am not going to the details of a diabetes. Okay. And the second thing is regarding the prevention of hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism prevention is very, very important. Okay. Uh, see the normal range of hypothyroidism. The normal range of hypothyroidism is 0.5 to 5. That is the normal range. But you have to understand one thing. The optimal range is 0.5 to 3. So, if a patient comes to you in a range of 0.5 to 3, you have to check for symptoms of hypothyroidism. Now, usually, that, this is optimal range. Okay, the, what, we, what, what do you mean by optimal range? In Malayalam, it is called Kayala Partha Okay, that is the optimal range. So, usually symptoms get started after 3. Okay, like obesity, hair loss, palpitation, amenorrhea, okay, etc. Skin, uh, skin pigmentation, etc. usually starts after 3. It will, it will not start after 5. So, this is a precious time for homeopaths to prevent hypothyroidism cases. Okay, that's my theme that we can prevent various endocrine disorders using our constitution or whatever strategy we can adopt, we can prevent disease. And this is, uh, this is an FNA, FNAC criteria and this is regarding goiter, okay. So my suggestion is you should always, if a case is goiter, you have to go for FNAC, okay. And this is Bethesda. Bethesda, there are seven classifications. You can see from uh, that is unsatisfactory to the malignant condition. Okay. So, for example, I will tell you four, four, five, and six are highly degenerative clinical condition. Okay. That is four, five, and six. So, if a patient comes and you refer for an FNAC and the result is four, with our homeopathy medicine, we can convert into two. Okay. With less time, we can convert it to. For example, I will tell you just an example. If, uh, for example, 4, 5, or 6, 
okay if a patient goes to a surgeon the next day is surgery <laughs> okay so we can prevent even in sixa itself we can prevent carcinoma that slide i will show you okay and this is uh, uh, regarding tirats this is uh, concerned with the radiology so we should not bother much more in tirats okay for example if a patient is coming and we, uh, we are referring for an ultra ultrasound uh, it may be 4a or 4b but you have to confirm it with fnac but in fnac it will be 2 okay so we should relay every time upon bethesda okay and this is the total pro that is a totality format i usually recommend and i usually do in my clinical practice this is not the usual kendian and this is a bulgarian method where we use this is one of the bulgarian method the, totally we have seven bulgarian method in which um, this is a causative modality that is a causative modality it can be either a mental modality or a physical or a pathological modality then aggravation amelioration physical generals concomitant concomitants and locations okay and this is a first case of hypothyroidism and see the tsh value it is 240 okay and this is a fresh case not not a case who is consuming uh, hormones okay this is a fresh case and actually i prescribe the medicine in this case that is pituitary okay pituitary 200 for 10 days are followed by thyroid now so you may be doubting or you may be having a question why i prescribe pituitary in this case the case why I, why i gone through that that strategy is even though the two, uh, tsh value is 240 there is no much inversely proportional symptoms in that case for example a patient is having a tsh of 10 or 15 it, it slightly raises to 5 or 10 itself there will be violent palpitation okay increased obesity and all but in this case even even at 240 there is only mild weakness okay mild elevation and and there is mild derangement in the periods so the clinical diagnosis or the etiology behind is the pituitary hypothalamo axial dysfunction okay that's a clinical uh, background begin. So I prescribe uh, pituitary followed by thyroidinum in this case. Uh, and this is on, you, you can see the dates that is 21 for 21. And this is uh, after, after two months, the TSH downs to 27.4. Okay. And again on eighth, that is after four months, it, it is almost in the normal range okay and this is a case oh, the second case is a case of autoimmune thyroid disease now it is very very common okay and see in this case normally in Hashimoto's the number of cases that is increased TPO okay but in this case that is anti TG is thyroglobulin anti antibody is increased and so as far as uh, Homeopathy sarcoma, it's very difficult to manage if there is increased TG, okay. TPO, is, it is easy to manage, okay. So, I want to tell you one thing, see the age of the patient. The age of the patient is 10 years, okay. And, the, and see the TSH value. It is paka normal, 1.9. But the symptoms, start, symptoms already started. So, in such cases, in such pediatric cases, we should always look for anti-TG. Okay. So that is very, very much elevated. That is 418. Okay. And I prescribed this calcarea iodide in this case. And after three, after this is 21 and that is 30, 11. With three months, it has come to normal. That is a TG. Okay. And this is a case of uh, papillary carcinoma of thyroid okay and see the FNAC FNAC result uh, result I have uh, given medicine with consent both from the patient and as well as from the bystander see in the right lobe the Bethesda category 6 
that is a papillary carcinoma thyroid and in the left lobe it is category 2 it's pacabinane okay and i have prescribed the medicine ruta in this case okay um, mainly the tendon affection more than that the specific affinity of ruta for malignancy okay so see after 9 months of treatment suggestive of colloid nodule category 2 okay and i repeated the case once again uh, once again in 196 and the last uh, and the previous was on 23 9 196 with no medicine after getting uh, category 2 i didn't give any any other medicine repeated the same the same category 2 so what i am telling is we have immense scope in managing even high degenerative thyroid diseases okay and this is regarding the pcod in pcod uh, there there will be variations in am anti mullerian hormone lh fsh ratio and all but uh, the icmr their protocol is mainly on uh, rotterdam criteria that is a ultrasound okay so L the lh fsh ratio also we can be managed so in pcod in paka pcod case the lh value will be much high than the that is the reverse of lh fsh ratio and this is just an example i am showing see on 1321 that the pcod suggest ultrasound suggestive of pcod and bulky uterus okay and after 6 months of treatment see there is no significant study and the size of the ovary is okay so if a 15 year homeopath can do you all can also do that okay thank you thank you dr revish thank you dr revish for the excellent presentation now we are seeing homeopathic endocrinologist homeopathic cardiologist homeopathic veterinary surgeon homeopathic surgeons so homeopathy is uh, everything everything uh, for every field of medicine you can use homeopathy uh, thank you now i am inviting dr shaji kudiyat vice president of ifph he worked hard for um, ifph actually when we are starting our webinar series he is the only one man leading this webinar and he sacrificed his sleep for ifph thank you sir Thank you, sir, uh, for your uh, effort. Now it is very easy to uh, lead the webinar series. But that time it was a great struggle for him. He was in Philippines that time. So the timing, will, uh, timing is very different. Uh, uh, when we are conducting the webinar, uh, our timing is, uh, for him it is uh, midnight. But he, uh, he don't sleep. Glenn, then pituitary, the parathyroid the thyroid gland, adrenals, ovary, and testes. Okay, you all know about this. And uh, I'm directly going to the theme of my presentation that is mainly we focus on, uh, from in homeopathy, we mainly focus on the treatment. So, they, so today, my initial presentation is on the prevention of endocrine disorders. Usually, in prevention in homeopathy, uh, we focus only on genus epidemicus. Okay. Uh, for, uh, for example, Arsal is for homeopathy, so homeopathy is for Arsal is a confusion for us. Okay. So, this is my theme that is a prevention of endocrine disorders. I am only focusing on three disease conditions. Okay. And, and this is regarding diabetes mellitus. See, in diabetes mellitus, the pre-diabetic condition, the pre-diabetic condition is always ranging from 5.7 to 6.5. Or roughly we can say that it is between 6 to 7. Okay. Now as per the new criteria of, of WHO, it is, uh, it, the patient is not pre-diabetic in that age is 5.4. That is a newly revised state. Okay. So why I presented this is, in this range, that is a, 5.7 to 6.5 is a precious time. We can prevent diabetes. That means above 6.5, it's a clinically a diabetic case. And in homeopathy, we can prevent cases in this range. That is 5.7 to 6.5.
using our constitutional treatment. So this usually majority of the homeopaths do. So I am not going to the details of her diabetes. Okay. And the second thing is regarding the prevention of hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism prevention is very, very important. Okay. Uh, see the normal range of hypothyroidism. The normal range of hypothyroidism is 0.5 to 5. That is the normal range. But you have to understand one thing. The optimal range is 0.5 to 3. So, if a patient comes to you in a range of 0.5 to 3, you have to check for symptoms of hypothyroidism. Uh, usually, that this is optimal range okay the, what we what what do you mean by optimal range in malayalam it is called kayala partha okay that is a optimal range so usually symptoms get started after three okay like obesity hair loss palpitation amenorrhea okay etc skin, uh, skin pigmentation etc usually starts after three it will it will not start after five so this is a precious time for homeopaths to prevent hypothyroidism cases okay that's my theme that we can prevent various endocrine disorders using our constitution or whatever strategy we can adopt we can prevent disease and this is uh, this is an fna fnac criteria and this is regarding goiter, okay. So my suggestion is, you should always, if a case is goiter, you have to go for FNAC, okay. And this is Bethesda. Bethesda, there are seven classifications. You can see from, uh, that is unsatisfactory to the malignant condition, okay. So, for example, I will tell you, four, four five, and six are highly degenerative clinical condition. Okay, that is 4, 5, and 6. So if a patient comes and you refer for an FNAC and the result is 4, with our homeopathy medicine, we can convert into 2. Okay. With less time, we can convert it to. For example, I will tell you just an example. If, a, for example, 4, 5, or 6. Okay. If a patient goes to a surgeon, the next day is surgery. <laughs> Okay, so we can prevent, even in six itself, we can prevent carcinoma. That slide I will show you, okay. And this is uh, uh, regarding tirats. This is uh, concerned with the radiology. So we should not bother m much more in tirats. okay. For example, if a patient is coming and we, uh, we are offering for an ultras ultrasound, uh, it may be 4A or 4B, but you have to confirm it with FNAC. But in FNAC, it will be 2. Okay. So, we should relay every time upon Bethesda. Okay. And this is the total pro, that is a totality format I usually recommend and I usually do in my clinical practice. This is not the usual Kendian. And this is a Bulgarian method where we use, this is one of the Bulgarian method, the, totally we have seven Bulgarian method in which um, this is a causative modality, that is a causative modality, it can be either a mental modality or a physical or a pathological modality, then aggravation, amelioration, physical generals, concomitants and locations, okay. And this is a first case of hypothyroidism and see the TSH value it is 240 okay and this is a fresh case not uh, not a case who is consuming uh, hormones okay this is a fresh case and actually i prescribe the medicine in this case that is pituitary okay pituitary 200 for 10 days are uh, followed by thyroidinum so you may be doubting or you may be having a question why i prescribe pituitary in this case the case why I, why i gone through that that strategy is even though the two, uh, TSH value is 240, there is no much inversely proportional symptoms in that case. For example, a patient is having a TSH of 10 or 15, 
it slightly rises to 5 or 10 itself, there will be violent palpitation, okay, increased obesity and all. But in this case, even, even at 240, there is only mild weakness, okay, mild elevation and, and there is mild derangement in the periods. So, the clinical diagnosis or the etiology behind is the pituitary hypothalamo axial dysfunction. Okay, that's a clinical uh, background behind. So, I prescribe uh, pituitary followed by thyroidinum in this case. And this is on, you, you can see the dates that is 21 for 21. And this is a, after, after two months, the TSH downs to 27.4. Okay. And again on 8th, that is after 4 months, it, it is almost in the normal range. Okay. And this is a case, oh, the second case is a case of autoimmune thyroid disease. Now it is very, very common. Okay. And see, in this case, normally in Hashimoto's, the number of cases that is increased TPO. Okay. But in this case, that is anti-TG is, thyroglobulin anti antibody is increased. And so as far as uh, homeopaths are concerned, it's very difficult to manage if there is increased TG. Okay. TPO, is, it is easy to manage. Okay. So I want to tell you one thing. See the age of the patient. The age of the patient is 10 years. Okay. And, the t and see the TSH value. It is Paka normal, 1.9, but the symptoms start, symptoms already started. So in such cases, in such pediatric cases, we should always look for anti-TG. Okay. So that is very, very much elevated. That is 418. Okay. And I prescribed this calcarea iodide in this case. And after three, after, this is 21 and that is 30, 11 with three months, it has comes to normal. That is a TG. Okay. And this is a case of uh, papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Okay. And see the FNAC, FNAC result. Uh, result. I have uh, given medicine with consent, both from the patient and as well as from the bystander. See, in the right lobe, the Bethesda category 6, that is a papillary carcinoma thyroid. And in the left lobe, it is category 2. It's Paka B9. Okay. And I have prescribed the medicine Ruta in this case. Okay. Um, mainly the tendon affection. More than that, the specific affinity of Ruta for malignancy. Okay. So, see, after 9 months of treatment, suggestive of colloid nodule category 2. Okay. And I repeated the case once again. Uh, once again in 196 and the last uh, and the previous was on 239 196 with no medicine after getting uh, category 2 i didn't give any any other medicine repeated the same the same category 2 so what i am telling is we have immense scope in managing even high degenerative thyroid diseases okay and this is regarding the PCOD. In PCOD, uh, there, is, there will be variations in AM, anti-mullerian hormone, LH, LH, FSH ratio and all. But uh, the ICMR, their protocol is mainly on uh, Rotterdam criteria. That is the ultrasound. Okay. So, L, the LH, FSH ratio also we can be managed. So, in PCOD, in PAKA PCOD case, the LH value will be much high than the, that's the reverse of LH-FSH ratio. And this is just an example I am showing. See, on 1321, that the PCOD, suggestive, ultrasound P, suggestive of PCOD and bulky uterus. Okay. And after six months of treatment, see, there is no significant study and the size of the ovary is okay. So, if a 15-year Homeopath can do, you all can also do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Revesh.
Thank you, Dr. Ravish, for the excellent presentation. Now we are seeing homeopathic endocrinologist, homeopathic cardiologist, homeopathic veterinary surgeon, homeopathic surgeons. So homeopathy is uh, everything, everything uh, for every field of medicine you can use homeopathy.